Hi Sven. So today we are not at the STS Elena guides, but we're in front of the whiteboard. And the reason is uh, that you use interferometers uh, for the STS Elena guides for different uh, purposes, uh, largely for the measurement of distances. Could you explain how an interferometer works and how it is used uh, in the context of an STS Selene guide? Yes, absolutely. So basically, how an interferometer works uh, bases on having light, laser light, that you kind of start in a laser with. So let's make the laser as a box, uh, which the box is basically a fully reflective mirror, uh, a fully reflective mirror, and you have a partially reflective mirror. And what we do in this box is we create, create laser lights, uh, which is then going from mirror to mirror. And these mirrors have to be, uh, have to have a distance of the wavelength or a multitude of the wa wavelength of the light. So uh, the concept of having laser light in here works. Now, the light in here doesn't really help us other than it being stored. What we then do is uh, we put a fiber on the laser and we take out this light to a collimator. Uh, basically, what we do here is we open up the, the width and then we make sure the light is again uh, basically going as a bigger beam. Those collimators you can also see uh, on the metrology card. So much uh, for that now. Now we have light somewhere in our Selenia guide system. I can quickly draw that. So for example, you would have uh, the Selenia guide carrier that you might know of as G carrier. Um, and we have the light here. Then additionally, we do have a mirror, of course, which is then going to be the neutron mirror, and it, it, which is a vertical, and then we will additionally have horizontal mirrors. We will discuss this in another video, how we do with that with those mirrors. But generally we have this slide here. Now, what we do is we reflect the light basically on the mirror, and then the light goes to a retroreflector. That's a bit more complex, but that's not relevant for this video. The light is then thrown back to the collimator and is coupled in back to the fiber. So basically, we have light that comes from the laser, hits the mirror, goes back into this uh, collimator, goes back. And that with doesn't that... really help us yet. Oh, sorry. With that principle, you can measure uh, distances depending on how long the light travels, right? You have to do a little trick in order to get the distance measurement. So what you have to do is you create a partially reflecting mirror here, or in our case, actually directly on the fiber end. Partially reflecting mirror. That means part of the light that is green that comes here, that is not even going into that system, but that is directly thrown back. And the other part from the green light that is coming uh, to the mirror, that is then coming back from here, goes back into this collimator and goes back here. Now we cannot really measure distance uh, with that setup. We need one more thing. And basically what we need is a, again, a mirror that is mostly sensitive to the light that comes back. And this mirror then reflects our red beam up here 
and it reflects our blue beam up here. And now we can start measuring distances. And the way we do that is basically we put a camera up here. Um, camera up here. And this camera measures whether there is light or there is no light. And the underlying concept here is that if you think uh, of light as a wave, this is meant to be a wave, um, then basically this light wave comes out here. Part of the wave is thrown back here and part of the wave is thrown back here. So basically what you can have now is you can have, let's make two waves, um, something like this. So basically uh, we can have the situation now that the red line, the red wave, that is pretty much following uh, here and the blue wave is also here. So they are in phase with each other. That means they complement each other. That means at the end um, you will get a double, uh, double the amplitude. You will get light out of this. So it will be bright where uh, the camera is. Whereas um, basically we could have the opposite situation. So this, uh, this uh, camera, basically the light that comes back, we again take red as the baseline. And the blue can be off uh, basically like this. Something like this. And the result that you get is they cancel each other out at any given position uh, and you don't get any light at all. So the camera is bright, uh, is dark in this case. Now, when you don't move anything in this system, you just get either a, a bright or a dark light. But if you start moving this mirror to the, fr to the back and to the front, then you get uh, basically times where it, uh, you have light and times where you don't. So you can, like with the resolver, you can count how many times this does it get bright and dark and bright and dark. And with this, you can then calculate how many wavelengths uh, you have moved forwards or backwards. And that's a very precise way on in measuring distances. You can get, that, get down to the picometers. The problem with it is that every time you lose contact, every time you break this line of sight, you also uh, don't know anymore how many steps uh, or, or where you're absolutely standing. So in general, this is a, um, this is a relative uh, distance measurement system and not an absolute distance measurement system which is a problem for our instrument, because if you think of a selenigite, when you look from the front to the selenigite, you have this carrier like this, and then you have plenty of mirrors in it. So basically a mirror section looks like this. So that's basically a side view of the selenigite. That's right, that's right. And basically, basically what we do is we turn the selenic guide like this and our metrology card here would be a system like this, would be a measurement plate that is attached to the front and the collimators are then on our metrology card. And here the metrology card is like this and the collimators look in the direction of the picture. Problem is, we have 15 of those mirrors along one carrier and every time forgetting where your absolute position is when you go from one mirror to the next because those are actual mirrors that are just uh, head to head with each, with each other, that would not be an option. So what we do here is we take a, a special interferometer 
uh, which allows us to not only measure one wavelength, but to actually scan a range of wavelengths, a range of different wavelengths uh, each time we measure. And that means at the end, for any given distance, we will, we will get a multitude of signals from this, those lasers to the cameras. And then within a certain um, range of distance, if, if we know the range of distance that we are in, then we can make an absolute statement where we are calculated from those different wavelengths. And that's how we measure the position of the selenium. So in short, for Selene, you use an absolute interferometer, while as for normal applications, you would use a relative interferometer. And I guess the difference in price is quite considerable, right? Uh, yes. So uh, do you have a significant difference in price? But you also have a different, you have a significant difference in the characteristics for the measurement. So if with the basic interferometer, you can measure in the, in the, in the large kilohertz um, range. So you can basically put that in front of a loudspeaker and you can record music with it. Uh, because you can uh, you can um, measure those high frequencies with the absolute interferometer. However, you have to scan, make a scan of wavelengths for each measurement, and that's then fairly slow. That's in the the range of half a second to two seconds per measurement uh, that you need to invest. So there is also a scope, uh, a different kind of scope that you can achieve with an absolute interferometer. All right. Thanks a lot, Sven, for the great explanation on the whiteboard. And maybe for a couple of other videos, we can then look at these components directly at the Selene Guides. Thanks a lot. Thank you.